So today we're going to be talking about plants and we're going to be thinking about what plants are sort of made out of. What are the building blocks of plants? I picked these pictures out uh, for a couple of reasons. So on the left there is a picture of the base of a species of conifer, a type of tree that lives in California. It's called a giant sequoia. The giant sequoia is the biggest tree on planet Earth. So it's also the biggest of all organisms on planet Earth. The largest of all the giant sequoia is the largest organism on the planet. So when I look at one, I wonder, well, what's going on there? What's it made out of? You could say wood, but what are the building blocks of that? The tree doesn't walk around and eat like an animal, so how is it gathering all that material to, to create such a massive trunk? And then I think about a smaller plant, like a spider plant. Well, a spider plant is different because I've seen them growing everywhere. They can grow on a rock ledge. I've seen them in a little cup of water with no soil. So it makes me wonder, how are they able to still grow even if they're just sitting in a little bit of water? What's, what are their leaves made out of? How are they able to get bigger um, without being in the dirt? That one is in the dirt, but sometimes I see them not in the dirt. So to think about this more, we're going to look at a model that um, it's kind of a, a way for you to organize your thinking around this. You just finished a unit on matter. You talked a lot with your teachers about the difference of between the solids and liquids and gases. So that's one way we could kind of organize our thinking about what goes into a plant. Our phenomenon in this case is just that the plant grows. Well, how, how is it possible that a plant just gets bigger and bigger? What matter is going into the plant and by what mechanism? And then when it's in the plant, what parts are solid? What parts are liquid? What parts are gas? And then does anything come out? And what is that, what, in what form does it come out of a plant? So I just want you to be starting to think about organizing your mind around what goes into building a plant and then what are sort of the byproducts of plant growth that we, maybe we haven't thought about. And we'll come back to this later. So now I'm going to introduce you to, um, or maybe you've heard about it before, but I'm going to teach you about the way that plants are able to convert materials that go in into food for themselves. And that process is called photosynthesis. Essentially photosynthesis, you might see the word uh, within the word here, photo, that's, a, that's kind of about using um, light energy. And synthesis is sort of like putting together so I think that name will make more sense when we talk about this a little bit more. I'm going to draw a picture of a tree here. Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit of color because it's important to me that we're thinking about this tree being green. When you see plants, you notice probably that the majority of the plant is green. The growing part of the plant is green the leaves, the needles, all that. And so um, that's kind of the part that we're going to focus on here because inside each of those green needles or leaves, there's a material. You don't need to know this name for now. It's usually the material kind of looks like, if we're looking at a microscope, it looks like a stack of plates stacked up. It's called chlorophyll, and that's where photosynthesis happens. It happens inside of chlorophyll. Okay, so what goes into a plant? Well, if you think about what is going into um, the roots of a plant, the most important thing for us to remember is that when it rains, the plant's not drinking through its leaves and its needles, it's drinking through its roots. So it rains, the water soaks into the ground, and the plant is able to draw it up through its roots. So water is one thing that's going into the plant. All around the plant, there are animals. Try a little snail here. Or people. 
And all animals, the snail is as big as a person. All animals are exhaling. They breathe out from the biggest blue whale to the smallest ant. And with their breathing out, one of the things that we breathe out when we exhale is carbon dioxide. All right? So carbon dioxide is absorbed in the chlorophyll. The water is drawn up. I'll make that a little bit more clear for you. The water is drawn up into the chlorophyll. The tree has ways to draw that up through the roots. And then there's one other thing it needs before it can start this process of photosynthesis. It needs energy. So what's the source of energy for plants? What do you think? You've probably noticed that plants organize their bodies, their, their um, leaves and their needles to get as much sunlight as possible. So we need sun energy. Okay. That sunlight's traveling the, the incredible distance through space and through the Earth's atmosphere and it's entering that chlorophyll there and kind of driving this whole process. So what's, what's being produced for the plant? The plant needs to eat. It needs to make its own food in this process of photosynthesis. So that's, that's kind of thing to know. Make your own food. It's something that green and growing things can do. They can make your, their own food. So that's the whole point here. And their food is sugar. They're making sugar, and then that sugar forms the carbohydrates that they're able to produce, um, in the case of the big giant sequoia tree, that huge trunk. So the, the majority of the mass is actually um, created through these sugars that the plant is able to make. You could think of all the other things that plants make. Sometimes you enjoy the benefit of the sugars they make when you eat a strawberry or an apple. But just know, even though the, the wood isn't sweet, if you bit into it, the sugar has the carbon that's in it that's then converted into so much of the material that forms the plant. Okay, so that sugar is staying in the plant here. But something is given off. What's given off is oxygen. The plant exhales in a way. It, it gets rid of a, a sort of a byproduct here, which is oxygen. It doesn't need the oxygen for its process. And that's a real benefit to you and I and all other animals, which then breathe in the oxygen. So you can see there's sort of a cycle here of us exhaling the carbon dioxide that the plant needs and the plant providing oxygen that we need. So let's think about this another way. I want to use kind of a different model for you to think about it for a second, because it might be new for you. I'm going to, this is a, a picture of a factory, and I'm going to actually color the factory green, because I want us to think about this factory as that chlorophyll, that the leaves. Okay. It's like a, this factory is the leaf of the tree. I even draw kind of like a leaf over it remind you of that. And when we have a factory, maybe I should draw it over here. Mind you, it's kind of a tree factory. I put a few leaves on it. But other factories that people make, let's say it's a, a factory that makes the masks that people are needing right now to protect themselves and others from the coronavirus. Well, materials go into the factory, and those are the raw materials for making face masks. Then it might be cotton, it might be paper or um, the wood fiber that paper is made from. It might be oil so that plastic can be produced um, to form the straps. And then what comes out is the product. That's what the, the purpose of the factory is. In that case, it's the face mask. But what about for a tree? 
What about for a leaf? Well, let's just remember what's going on here for a second. So we have water that was being drawn up to the roots. There's a chemical formula for water that you might know, it's H2O. That might help us uh, think about this a little bit. It's not expected that fifth graders understand the chemical formulas here, but it might help you to see. This is a way that scientists use to kind of organize how we think about different uh, molecules. And the H stands for hydrogen, and the O stands for oxygen. And then we have carbon dioxide. And the chemical formula for that is CO2, okay? And you remember what else? This factory, like all factories, I'm going to draw a little kind of wire coming off of it here, because factories need some source of energy. They're definitely kind of plugged into the electrical grid. They need energy to run their machinery. And in this case, that energy is the sun. needs the sun um, energy in order to sort of drive this whole process. Okay, so the product, do you remember what comes out? Sugar. So this factory is making sugar for the tree. It's happening inside those leaves. It's happening inside, inside those leaves in this molecule called chlorophyll that I mentioned. And the sugar has a chemical formula. C, six, so we have carbon. That six is like, how many atoms are in it? You don't need to know that now, but it might be fun just for you to see it. H12, O6. So we have carbon dioxide and water going into this factory. We have the sun's energy kind of running all its machinery. And the product, the product, is sugar. That's what's coming out. Are we done? No, there's one more thing. Most factories have some kind of emission, some kind of unneeded byproduct. Might come out of the smokestack. And in this case, the tree does not need oxygen, or at least the free oxygen. The free oxygen that float around the atmosphere is O2. It's two oxygen atoms connected to each other. Okay. So that's coming out, and that's uh, a great benefit, remember, that we talked about to these animals that are breathing out carbon dioxide. So that's another way of sort of organizing. That's my model, kind of using the factory to organize your thinking around how this process of photosynthesis works. Some people say that life on Earth would not be possible without photosynthesis, so maybe you could think about that. So what do I want you to do with this? I want you to um, learn a little bit more about the way plants sort of access materials as their building blocks. And I've linked in a podcast. It's by uh, Radio Lab. It's a podcast I listen to sometime, and you might enjoy it. It's sometimes about science. And in this episode, they talk about trees and some of the extraordinary ways that trees access nutrients. It's not a podcast made for kids, but I think that um, you'll enjoy it. And actually, I think it's so amazing. You should invite a family member, maybe older sibling or a parent to listen to it with you. So you have someone to talk about what you're learning. The podcast is about a half an hour long. And while you listen, you should take some notes or draw some pictures just to sort of process what you're hearing. And then I'd like you to make a model to show your thinking about what materials plants are made up with. So um, you might use information from the podcast. You might use information I shared with you just now. You could go back and look at this video again about photosynthesis. And um, remember about, remember this model. This might be a model that will help you kind of as you make your model. You don't have to use this one, but if it helps you, then you could sort of take a screenshot or you could just draw this out and use this to help you organize your thinking. Or you could just go from scratch, just get a blank sheet of paper and use this um, sort of guidance to think about how you make a, a good scientific model. You've probably seen this poster before. Um, 
what are sort of the elements of a strong scientific model? Well, just remember that we should have some kind of an explanation that, so there should be words that go with it, there should be pictures, there should be colors, Maybe you have a zoom in bubble. Maybe you have some way of showing elapsed time. And what questions do you still have about what you are learning? And then um, I'd just love to see pictures of your models and see what you're thinking about what, how plants are made. What, what are the building blocks of a plant? So I hope that you're all um, poised to enjoy this, this learning and this project. And I look forward to seeing what you do. Take care.